Code 1, Civil Priority. Isolation now in effect. To avoid the risk of contamination, please stay indoors and await further instructions. Well, good morning, everybody in the tribe world. Uh, I hope you're doing well as we continue on in these uncertain and troubled uh, and certainly challenging times. I'm delighted to be joined today uh, by a tremendous uh, young man who uh, best known and loved by you all as Slade. Uh, and uh, join me in welcoming Matt. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Ray. Hi there. Hey, <laughs> great, great to be talking to you. How you doing? And, and so lovely to be able to connect to everybody out there so thank you so much first of all for for having me on it's a it's a real real pleasure and privilege i love to hear your voice and um, and as some of the listeners will know if they've listened to some of the other podcasts i'm i'm stranded in australia and matt uh, you're in in uh, in london or what kind of england are you in right now yeah, so I, I'm in Reading, um, so just about half an hour um, outside of London, just just to the west. Um, and uh, yeah, just sat at the moment, uh, very lucky to, to be able to have access to a garden. Um, so just just sat in the garden. Uh, it's uh, you know, early morning here, nice blue sky, sunny day. Um, so yeah, that that's where that's where me and the family are right now in, in, in lockdown, uh, as with the rest of the world. How are you coping with it, Matt? Because you've got um, you've got a two-year-old here since since uh, <laughs> yeah. you got married, and you, you've got your father with three lovely children, and yeah. uh, and the young one, the, the the they say the terrible twos, but I mean that's a handful. I mean at the best of times and. But if you're kind of locked into a house, I mean, that, how are you getting on? What kind of, what do you do in the day? Yeah, well, it's definitely, I mean, I've always had a lot of respect for, for teachers, but my respect for them now has just gone through the roof because, yeah. <laughs> you know, when when you attempt to do a little bit of homeschooling of, uh, you know, my, my seven-year-old daughter and uh, and look after the two-year-old, you just realise, wow, uh, all teachers deserve medals. <laughs> <laughs> Education is the greatest legacy. It really is, and and I've uh, not missed. I mean, I, I think uh, it's it's uh, again interesting in this day and age with the care workers and you, it throws everything on its head. Really, where you suddenly realise, you know, even even people that are working in the grocery shops and keeping services yeah. open, and the care workers and and the teachers certainly that uh, you realise that. Uh, you know how valuable their services are really and uh... Uh, absolutely right and they you know it, it's all of those you know incredible people on the front line that are that are keeping you know selflessly keeping the world turning right now um it, it you know true from you know for, 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 from all those teachers to you know the, the, the supermarket cashier to you know to the to the postman to the delivery drivers um some incredible people there that are keeping it all turning around but um and our job you know all, all i have to do with my family is just you know stay at home so um yeah it's it definitely has some challenges with it but um i, I think our, the key thing we've just been trying to remind ourselves is that to be kind um you know to be kind to each other <laughs> as a family and um while we are in lockdown and also to, to kind of know that um, on those days when you feel a bit frustrated or you feel uh, you know a, a little bit anxious that absolutely that it's completely okay to not be okay uh, in, in these circumstances and and to just again with that be kind to ourselves and recognize that these are yeah extraordinary unprecedented times and with that you know every single person is just trying to do the best they can um and uh, you know being gentle i think with ourselves is, is is the key and having the compassion for ourselves that we we often have for other people you know so i think that's good advice matt and um this before we started recording i was mentioning to matt we get a lot of uh, emails and messages from from our within our tribal brothers and sisters around the world, the tribe fandom that some are coping very well and yeah, others yeah. struggling, and um, and we're always saying it's uh, as you rightly say, Matt. It's not a sign of weakness to uh, reach out and uh, yeah. say I'm hurting, I'm struggling, I'm up to down, just uh, feeling down, whatever. But uh, but it is. It's uh, it's uh, we'll get through it, and it's uh, yeah. Uh, it 
A- absolute, absolutely right. There's a um, a, there's a broadcaster that I, I'm a huge fan of, Mark Commode, um, and he does um, film reviews and, and criticism. And um, he has a podcast, and and he has a saying on there, which is, he said, Ev- everything will be all right in the end, and if it's not all right, it's not the end. <laughs> and um, oh, nice saying. It's lovely. Yeah, I just find real, real comfort for, from that. Um, yeah. And I think that's the thing, knowing that actually to be vulnerable and to be able to reach out and, and talk to family members or, or, or use the technology now, you know, that we have, be it Zoom or Skype or WhatsApp or FaceTime, just to, you know, connect with friends and see faces and just know that, you know, actually uh, the world is a huge community at the moment that's all going through this same experience. Um, and I think, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? The, that it's un, as you rightly, the word is unprecedented. I mean, yeah, uh, not even in times of war, as the, you know, from from literally, it's it's hands across the world. I mean, we're all all going. Yeah. This. And and Matt, England, you've had a or the UK, you've had a a real rough patch there, haven't you? Really, and uh, even with your Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, being an intensive care, it's frightening. I mean, when I mean that makes it even so more. You know, really, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Just incredible that, uh, and um, and and the media and, and all that stuff. Again, it's uh, uh, are you are you able to leave that? You're able to leave the house, are you, and get groceries? Obviously, but yeah. yeah so so we can. So um, yeah. So I I go um, you know, kind of j- just you know, once or twice a week to to do to do a food shop. Um, and uh, yeah, my my wife um, yeah, has asthma, so uh, she's kind of under lock and key in the house just to make sure that you know she's quite high risk. So um, I've been going out, you know, to to to, to get um, you know the uh, bit of food in and uh, and stuff like that. But we go out. I think exercise has been really key. Um, you know, just being able to go out and and just go for a a, a run every day just for 30 minutes you know just to kind of clear the head and and physically keep strong which kind of mentally helps keep strong um and you know very lucky to kind of have a park near us where you you know you can go for a run um but it's very interesting there you just naturally see if 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 a runner sees another runner in the distance or you know you're coming up to a couple walking or a family just everybody's very aware and 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 there's that moment of quite a slight awkwardness where you're just looking to go how how much distance can i keep but also a recognition you know i think everybody just there's eye contact and people just knowing that you know um there 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 is still very much a community out there you know we might not be able to be as physically close as some people would like or or but the, those connections are still out there and still happening and matt i mean it, it's uh, I, I don't know if it's um, as uh, people know from some of uh, some of my biographies or whatever it is but i'm like that character and as good as it gets you know i mean before this all started i'm a german i mean i'm yeah. I, I mean, it's just a hypochondriac and, you know, somebody, <laughs> I dive and, you know, just, so, and I'm constantly washing my hands. It's obsessive and, and I'm driving yeah. and everybody here crazy, you know, because, uh, you know, and, and it's almost like I'm on an asbestos suit and armor. <laughs> I believe yeah. that's enough for me. I want, I'm thinking, I want to get some, uh, some of those, you know, those kind of knights in armor costumes. Right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. it and, uh, and it was some, a, a tube coming out that, like with, yeah. with oxygen or something, it's, uh, <laughs> it was, I, I, I'm, I put the drawbridge up, I'm going nowhere, you know. Oh, right, I, I, I hear you totally. I mean, you know, when, when I was in the supermarket, you, you know, a couple of days ago, you know, you, you, I pull up in the car and then I feel as if I'm about to go in and uh, and rob it because you know I, I put on I put I put on my face mask and then I put on my gloves and I yeah. just feel like I'm getting ready to go and do a heist and then yeah. and then we were we were in the I think the bread aisle and you know and and a guy halfway up the aisle sneezed. And literally the whole aisle, everybody was just, they just stopped for a, for a second. And then trolleys banging into each other as everybody tries to escape. And and I think, I don't know, I think if you can, there is a hum, 
uh, yeah, a humor to it as well, you know, and it's just a case of just trying to keep, you know, keep the perspective, keep the common sense and just acknowledge that, you know, yeah, yeah, we, 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 everybody's doing their best and, and trying to just, you know, so hear very much the focus is on supporting yeah. the nhs and ensuring that it doesn't reach breaking point and you know all those doctors and nurses my god they're just what what they are doing on our front line is just you know astonishing um and it, it's great actually Ray. this morning uh, i think just as we started having our chat um there was a um uh, a retired captain uh, who who fought in the second world war a guy called tom moore he's 99 years old and he pledged to walk a um, hundred laps of his garden before he hit a hundred years old. And he wanted to raise a thousand pounds for the uh, National Health Service. And he's ended up today at the finishing line raising 12 million pounds. Oh, that's <laughs> Isn't that tremendous? I mean, that's, that's what will, those type of stories are, are so inspirational, aren't they? And just- uh, Yeah wonderful and uh so he would he would be a veteran of the second world war and, uh, he, yeah it's i mean just incredible and, and i think it's you know we you mentioned about the media and, I, and i'm very careful about trying to regulate how much media i access so you know i'll i'll, I'll check what's going on in the morning and then we have a briefing in the uk around five o'clock every day as to you know next steps and where we're at and i try and just as much as possible keep it to those two chunks because otherwise you know i'm sure like many people i have found myself just constantly on my phone just yeah. just you know watching all the stories roll in and i think it's absolutely important to be aware but I just found for me, it was just making me more anxious. And, and I'm like, actually, this isn't good for me. So I think regulating what you have access to news wise is, is uh, I found to be a real, real key and, and focusing on those good news stories as well. Like, you know, the, 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 ret the retired captain, you know, it's like that will keep me going, you know, throughout the day, <laughs> you know, that, that's excellent. And it is, it's a, uh, again, it's a sad indictment, uh, to our society, I suppose, where, I mean, it's understandable news tends to, bad news sells, doesn't it, really, or it's a sensation. Yeah, one. yeah, ab absolutely, it, it really does. And I wish some of the networks, I mean, if I run the network, I'd, I'd certainly uh, give the, the truthful news, and but I'd all, I'd, I'd, I'd have five minutes of good news stories, you know, yeah. with the, to, to have that half empty, half full, where, you know, but it's, uh, no, it's a, it's a, and my heart goes out. I mean, as, as as we're speaking now, Matt, there'll be some bereaved people, some people who have had lost their loved ones because of this, yeah. and, and it's horrendous for them. And, and no, very, all, yeah, very, very much so. Obviously, there's some people hurting physically as well, losing their jobs, yeah. worried about how they pay their mortgage, and and yeah. so our thoughts are with them as well. But absolutely, you know, I mean, it's uh, so. You know, I was saying to my family today, and I'm sure you echo the same sentiments. I mean, we're, um, you know, we're privileged really to have a roof over our head and some food and, yeah, yeah. and to, uh, to touch wood to be healthy. And uh, uh, Absolutely, Ray. And I think it's like, you know, just, just looking at, you know, I'm aware of how, how, how lucky I am to just be able to have access as well to, to, to a garden. Um, and I know there's so many people that don't. And actually, you know, within this lockdown over here, the weather in the UK has been pretty good, actually, the last few weeks. But, you know, I, I, it's those moments of just realising that yeah, counting blessings um, very much is key. And I don't know, it just seems at the moment that, you know, I mean, looking up in the sky, the sky is completely blue. There are no vapour trails because there's no planes and, and we're normally on a flight path. You're just very much aware that, you know, I mean, one of the good news stories, obviously, is how the planet is, there is a healing that's going on environmentally, you know, with levels of uh, of CO2, levels of nitrogen, levels of, you know, there is that story as well. And I don't know, Ray, you know, maybe once everything is in the rear view, maybe the world will just go back to how it was. But I don't know, I, I maybe there's a sense that there will will it you know will it change you know in some ways for the good you know maybe travel that isn't essential might drop 
you know, planes that don't people flights that don't need to be made. Maybe people will think a couple of times before doing that if if possible. Um, so I think if some good can come from it, then, you know, so it's, and, and I think yeah. that's, uh, and, and we've discussed elements of that in the different podcasts, uh, Matt, you know, where and I think I think the consensus is it's a uh, it's a it's a time to press pause and to maybe hit yeah. the button and for us all to self reflect and maybe identify what is of true value and uh, yeah. And, but I have great faith in the human spirit and condition. I really yeah. do, and I think we're amazing, uh, really, uh, as a species. You know, where um, you know where we can we can uh, match yeah. it good thing about these uh, these chats it gives uh, your fan chance to know a little bit more about who is Matt Robinson and, and yeah. you know and so and so Matt you you uh, you have siblings no it is yeah only, only child just me okay. so and and your dad and and your mum and and did did you grow up always wanting you're a, a very creative being and 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 was your dad an influence or your mum on that, or how did all that come about? Yeah, that's a great question, Ray. Um, I, I think for me, so my dad used to he he was um a, a banker uh, all of his life, and so very much dad was, you know, nine to five, um, and. Uh, mum, you know, looked, look, look, you know, stayed at home and, and looked after the house and was really active, you know, kind of you know, had, a, had a great social circle and was a really creative spirit. But when I said that I, you know, wanted to go into to acting and that was my, I felt was my calling. I think, I think my dad was like, oh my God, okay, but why not do that? But also possibly get another job as well. And, <laughs> and to their credit, actually when they realized that this was absolutely what i wanted to do and the path i wanted to go down um i think you know at the time i i, I probably took it for granted but they they just they they went with it and they supported me fully um and you know sadly my my mum passed away just literally about 2 months before um i came out to to new zealand to film tribe um yep. I remember that actually, and I yeah, yeah, uh, that. and that was, uh, and in fact, um, you know, it, it's it's quite interesting. I um, uh, my wife, my wife at the time had been, she she had taken a trip to Canada, and she flew back, and she flew from uh, you know, Toronto to LA, LA to Auckland, then from the Auckland leg, she flew with. She said, "Oh, I met a charming young man today on the flight," oh, and, that's it, right. and, and it was you, you know. So. <laughs> that's- yeah, you yeah. together, and uh, and she she was telling me, and and um, and so that's a small world, but uh, but no, I mean that you you you, and how did all that come about, Matt? Again, I know the story, but uh, I'll yeah, let your own words. How did you get the part of Slade? Of Slade, yeah. Well, so I was, um, I, I mean, the summer before, I was doing some open air uh, theatre. I was doing. Um, uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet, um, playing Romeo in that, and we were touring around all these uh, beautiful you know, country houses and gardens. It was really, really lovely summer. Um, and on the back of that, got a new agent. And then on the back of that, they mentioned, you know, about, um, you know, they put me forward for for auditions um, for, for for this character Slade in, in the Tribe. And I'd never done, um, you know, uh, TV before, especially at not that level. But I, I think for me, you know, having just lost mum, I had this sense of, I don't know, um, I guess fearlessness, uh, a sense of actually, you know, I'm just going to live each moment and just go for it. I, I was still obviously deeply grieving, but at a, as a very early, you know, young 20 year old, you don't really acknowledge that. <laughs> um, um, so I remember going into the audition for Slade and I just felt this sense of, you know what, I, I know I'm meant to be here in this room uh, and, and I really reading the script i just felt a real connection to this character who was you know very much in a way a lost soul um you know slade you're looking at going well what's his motives what's his objective you know whose side is he on who you know what what's his story 
And, you know, for me, Slade was this lost soul who was who was searching and looking. And obviously it becomes clear what he's searching for. So straight away, I felt this connection and I, and I felt this fearlessness. I think I felt like in that audition room. No, I, this this part is mine. Uh, and universe right now, you owe me one. <laughs> there was a sense of that. But um, and then obviously I know that, you know, kind of when when you saw saw, saw the, um, the the tapes, you, you know, I think you recognize something and and I owe so much to you Ray for 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 you know for championing me because I know it was you know you played a such you know the defining part in in my story and you gave me that life changing opportunity that meant at a moment when my life had kind of imploded I was able to then you know a couple of months later be in the most beautiful country I'd ever been in surrounded by an incredible group of people that became a family and I was able to have a purpose and a goal and a focus so um when it comes to that Ray I, I honestly can't can't thank you enough you know that's very sweet of you to say Matt and and I have to say that I I, I recall the day very well where you know we we, we had a lot of people audition for the part yeah and, um and it took about three seconds where I saw it and I thought that's Slade and and it's weird <laughs> Like, you know, where there is, you know, I, I, I mean, without, I mean, spiritually, I don't know what it is. I mean, I think there's a realm that possibly we don't understand. It's, I mean, we can call it instinct or intuition, but yeah, yeah. In that, when I saw it and I thought, I, oh, there's a connection. And, and yeah. I thought, we, we, I thought you have to come uh, to New Zealand. And, and you did, I have to say, you did a tremendous job and uh, were a joy and able to work with when we'd, uh, I do. I've worked with you again in a heartbeat, Matt. And uh, so, and what did your dad say when you went back and said, "Hey, Dad, I got the part"? Oh uh, well, I just, I just remember re really, really clearly um, because I, I was a little at, at the time. I think you know, I was aware that I would be, you know, leaving, leaving my dad and and literally going to the other side of the world. And he was obviously, you know, dad had been married to to mum for thirty years, so. Um, he was, you know, grieving hugely. Um, and I remember I went to see him and we, um, uh, we, we opened a bottle of, uh, of nice wine and, uh, dad, dad loved his wine and we sat down and, and we had a glass together and I told him the news and, um, and he just, I remember him just, just, he just raised his glass and we toasted each other. And, and he said, well, you know, your mum would be so proud as am I. Um, and, and it was, really powerful so i know i went there with um uh, you know with 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 his blessing and uh, and all and i agree right i think there is a dimension that we don't know about and i think you know i don't have a religious faith per se myself but i'm very aware that you know i i have this sense that you know i kind of carry my mum with me and i very much felt that you know I don't know. I felt she was able to know what I was doing there. Um, so I, I felt a great deal of strength um, throughout I, the filming. I only believe that, Matt. I really do. I mean, I think your mum walks with you every day. And uh, as yeah. my mum, my late mum and my, my dad sadly passed away. But love transcends death. Uh, I still yes. love a dad. And I love yeah. him. And I, it's a different incarnation. I mean, I can speak with him. You can speak with your mum. And so yeah. any, it's a... Uh, going through that grieving process to realize that, you know, it, it, it is, it's, uh, it's, um, you know, you never stop uh, uh, my mother and father, your mum and your mother and your father, bless them, will be with you forever, really. Now, Matt, yeah. some of the questions that you've, you know, as a dad, we were, and we, we again share some similar, you know, through our families with, uh, with autism and on the yeah. autistic spectrum and, your lovely son Zach, who is now ten years old, um, has uh, has struggled in the early years of his life, and then did you, you and your lovely wife, as yeah. parents, have gone through very difficult times of late, haven't you? I mean, uh, would you feel comfortable to maybe chat about that? 
Yeah, of course, right, absolutely. Yeah, so so Zach is uh, yeah on, on the uh, profound uh, uh, end of of, of the spectrum. Um, so for Zach, his autism means that he needs one to one care twenty four seven. He is yeah he, he's ten. He's a very strong, very physical boy. <clears throat> um, so he has no sense of danger whatsoever. Um, but uh, is incredibly strong and incredibly fast. Um, he has something also called Pika syndrome. So basically for Zach, everything goes in his mouth. So if you're in the garden, uh, be it soil, snails, earth, everything, he's, he's like um, a toddler who has that curiosity, you know, everything goes in the mouth. So Zach needs, you need to keep your eyes on Zach the whole time. Um, you know, Zach's, um, autism is is the is this is the side of autism that often you know in my experience we don't hear about a huge amount it's not uh, that story is not told often uh, within the media because it's often you know a, a very harsh reality um and um it's always been my role as his dad to be able to help give Zach his voice because he has snatches of language but he's he's fairly non-verbal so it's my job to fight for him my job to to be his advocate um and you know make sure that his story is told and and you know we know many many parents who who are in similar situations um who's you know whose children just uh often fall through the cracks don't get the care that they receive don't get the funding by the local authority to to be able to have what they need um and i think you know when we became parents and that was our first um in our heads we had a plan of how it would all play out and then obviously you know you uh, you have your plans and then life has different plans and it's definitely taken me, uh, you know, the last decade to, you know, um, deal with that struggle with guilt that I feel as a, as a parent that I'm letting him down. I'm not giving him what he needs. Moments of great frustration, uh, moments of great anger, um, not necessarily towards him, but towards the world. And I've been on a huge journey to try and find peace with that um, and really just accept Zach for who he is and the soul that he is and um I spent the last year in in therapy and actually <clears throat> again for me it was life-changing Ray um being able to for the first time in my life and being a you know a bit of an alpha male who keeps things bottled up and has a bit of a <laughs> you know you've got to be strong driver at times to be able to sit and talk um for about uh, a a year um you know once a week to somebody who just really listened and through that process i've just i've accepted that zach is who zach is um and the now we are at a stage where we have fought to get zach residential care and he is in an incredible place in the UK called Priors Court, um, which has 50 acres of land and swimming pool and one to one round the clock carers who are just these men and women who have just such capacity for patience, for, for strength, for sharing knowledge and nourishing and who are going wow we are never ever going to give up uh, on knowing that there's so much potential there with Zach um so I feel much more peace now Ray that actually Zach is you know in, in a in a place where he needs to be and he comes back with us every weekend and and during the holidays and and he's getting what he needs and the sensory input that he needs but it was a struggle, Ray. We had to fight and fight and fight uh, with literally every single hour of the day to get um, the place allocated and the funding allocated. And it's a, it is a sorry situation that so many families of children uh, with special needs and on the severe end of the spectrum, they do not get the care they need. They do not get the provisions. And um, we're able to shout quite loud and there are some people that can't um so um it's uh, you know you, you know it, i just 
want to give so much strength and encouragement to anybody that listen is listening that might be a parent or a sibling in a similar situation that you know it sounds very cliche but do not give up uh, a on fighting the fight that you know you you know your, your child needs but also you know never to to, to give up on, on, on your child um which i at times lovely you know, Matt, and very yeah, so. thank you for uh, opening and i know our listeners will be find that very moving and very inspiring and and um i was saying to matt i mean matt will be aware my wife and i set up a, a charity called the cloud nine children's foundation where we work a lot with uh, families in similar predicaments to matt and and it is it's a it's a hard i mean love is an interesting emotion and when you <laughs> love yeah isn't it really i mean it's a it's a, a four letter word you know but you know when you think about it that when you know the minute a child is born or when you fall in love and we've always talked about it where somebody's happiness becomes um uh, central to your own where you can't be happy and sack is happy and um and that's uh, you know we we talked i talked about aj penn and the novels about this as well and and we featured that theme where you know that love is you know for myself i've got, I've got a young son my youngest son is on the autistic spectrum and and his happiness, I mean, my happiness is dependent on him. I can't be happy in the world. He's happy. In- yeah, I, abs- I, right, absolutely. And like you say, love is, it, it's such a, it's so complex, isn't it? And I think, you know, mm. it's that moment of, you know, absolutely, I, I completely relate. You know, if the kids are, if the kids are all right, then I'm all right. And because yeah. it is, it's like, I think some described it as, it's like your heart walking around in the world you know, on legs. <laughs> yeah, I that's know, what. That. <laughs> you know that that's absolutely what it's like and um and, and i very much yeah you, you mentioned about you know aj and you know and, and w- what i loved in particular you know um a, a, about the, the the aj pen books is just that love seemed to be such an overriding theme uh especially with you know the story of you know kind of slade's progression in in, in that narrative you know that actually so the books man yeah very very much i mean i think you know to to be able to have that wonderful that you know that the story continues um and that you know the, these characters you know still still continue um and, and for 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 slade i mean i i loved the direction you know you know that his um uh, character goes in i mean I, I, i'm sure i'm not giving any spoilers away um because i'm sure most people listening to this ha- have avidly read r- devoured the books but um you know um you know it, it really becomes love for slade doesn't it you know love of of uh you know of, of ruby and 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 when he that's, gets saved that's and, right. that's you know right. I, and then slay and then becoming becoming a father himself and you get this sense that this character who's been on a quest right from episode one where we see him just to just arrive and and see ram on on the bike and he's on a quest and that's his miss his mission to 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 rescue yeah uh josh and then to to have it ending with actually him yeah wounded but saved by love saved by the love of ruby and and then a father himself I, i i thought that um i thought that was really powerful yeah, it was, at some point, Matt, it's interesting. Just through these uh, podcasts, that we've had a lot of um, a lot of our listeners saying, uh, "Are there audio books?" And so far, there haven't been. But um, you know, I've had a couple of the cast, and I'd love to do. Uh, and I think you'd you'd uh, you have oh. a lovely voice. So you've got a lovely voice. I found it very calming. I have to say, I've always thought that that you did a a voiceover for one of our early uh, uh, promos. And um, that's right. Yeah. Have you done any of that kind of stuff you do voiceover work if not you I, should yeah I, I well thank you so much right i mean gosh i'd love to absolutely love to do some uh audiobook stuff with, with, with you guys especially with with the tribe stories it's so so dear and so close to me um i do i do a lot of voiceover um which i really love from um you know sometimes like online e-learning stuff to audiobooks um to, to kids toys as well so um my wife 
Suzanne uh, is a brilliant voiceover artist. Um, and we, uh, at one stage a few years ago, we both found ourselves doing uh, voiceovers for competing toy companies. <laughs> so, uh, you know, within the house, there'd be a birthday cake that one of the kids would be playing with that has Suzanne's voice when you blow out the candle. And then there's a toolkit that has my voice. And you, you slowly notice the two of us start to try and, you know, <laughs> push the other toy out the way. No, no, no. Right. You, you want to play with this one. No, no, no. This one's much better. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Suzanne's in the business and, and, and she's enjoying motherhood. Obviously, uh, the difficulties, she will have mirrored your struggles with yes. Zach. Natural. And, and the two girls now, the Zach sisters, they're doing well. And... Oh, yeah, they're, they're great, Ray. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Georgia, who's seven and uh, just a real creative spirit. Um, really, for her, I think it's music, um, which is just she hears a song once and, and that is it. it it's uh, she'll remember it. She started writing her own songs as well. I, I accompany her very quietly in the background on guitar or piano and she just comes up with these lyrics and vocal melodies. It's such a strong uh, musical spirit and um, run roses too. And yeah, <laughs> she's she's really owning being a two year old. Wow. I mean, uh, from the sweetest little craziest thing to just she's like Jack Jack from The Incredibles, you know, where, <laughs> where Jack Jack goes crazy. And so but she's absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, Suzanne is I mean, she's an absolute rock, um, just a very strong, beautiful um, woman um, who's yeah completely um open about you know the struggles that she's had you know and, and i think my wife has helped and encouraged so many other people and and mums uh, and women in similar situations by being so open um and yeah i she's we're a good team um we're, you know, we're a very good team i think that the way you speak is so wonderful and it's uh, uh you know i mean it's uh it's a testament to the the tremendous man you are and your spirit to to be able to speak and you know to touch other people and I'm sure for Suzanne as well I think it's a uh, it's important to uh, uh, to to do that and and if you can even touch one person it's worth it and yeah. and now Matt I, I, I mean it's just, I'm, I bet all the Tribe fans are going to get mad at me for saying you <laughs> I, up, I mean I love to connect and we'll we'll be doing this again. Hopefully on the with Suzanne and next time I'm in, in England or we'll have to get you you back to this neck of the woods. But oh we'd love that. Some, we'd love that right? some questions from some of the fans. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, and we've got them from Facebook and a lot of email uh, messages and lots and so I won't be able to get to them all. But so we'll just take a selection from Instagram and, and our, our Twitter and also the uh, email messages. But I've got one from Rita Husko. Good morning, Rita. Hi Matt morning, Rita, Rita from Finland. Um, Slade is definitely my favourite character. I would like to ask what Slade would have done if he hadn't found Ram. That's interesting. Oh, it's a brilliant. Yeah, hi Rita. That, that's a great question. Oh, I mean, oh, it's so interesting isn't it? because I think you know Ram was the key, was the linchpin for you know kind of Slade's overall plan. Um, he needed Ram to be able to then, you know. Uh, be able to use Ram to, to to get to Mega to then try and save Mega from himself and, and the situation. Um, so oh, it's a great question. I think if he hadn't found him, then I, I always got the sense of Slade as being incredibly resourceful. And, you know, this was his mission, I think, driven by a sense of guilt as to what happened when him and Josh were younger um, and that sense that actually for Slade it's it, the whole life is just atoning for that that feeling of abandoning Josh and, and and then that sense of wanting to rescue him so I think nothing would have stopped Slade from his quest um, he'd have had to have adapted um, but I sure think finding Ram was was the key early on um, but I don't think he'd. I don't think this is a character that would ever have given up. He'd have found another uh, another way in, as it were. No, I agree entirely with that. Um, that that's a, I've got one from Mark James. Good morning, Mac. Mark. Was the jacket Slade had the same one the Hunger had in season two? And how many costumes were as reused and remade? Now I can answer that. Uh, Matt may not know. Yes, Mark. We 
uh, being a small indie, we'd had, we'd we'd struggle to get every dollar on the screen. So yeah, we'd, uh, cannibalize and and reuse and. Uh, uh, so I don't know for sure if that was reused. I would uh, suspect so because we we'd always try and remake the things. But um, it's interesting here. Matt uh, Mark adds. I also acquired a similar red jacket and modelled my look on Slades. No, <laughs> wicked. Well, I tell you, I mean, nice one, Mark. I mean, that, that I loved that jacket. I just thought it was so, you know, when I when I arrived and um, you know, had had my first wardrobe uh, fitting as Slade, and it was such a moment. And you know, kind of dyed my hair black and had the extensions put in, had the uh, the, the tattoo put on the arm. And then that jacket came out and it just felt perfect. That that bright kind of scuffed red with a black insignia, almost the tattoo on the back of it. Uh, I was so, yeah, I, I, I really loved, you know, the, the way that, you know, Wardrobe uh, and all those amazing crew made Slade look. It was, um, yeah, I felt, I felt very cool when I was playing Slade. Oh, you look very cool. I mean, it was, uh, and Mark, you would have been a real cool dude, you know, walking around more than you look on slaves, I'm sure. That... Absolutely. That's, that's so awesome to hear. That's wicked. Do you know, Matt, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I I love, um, as I think I've mentioned in the podcast, indigenous cultures and, and the way yeah. young people can express itself through piercings or jewellery or even yeah. flex. And, and I was always, I was, when you came down and um, and I was thinking, what can we do? And I thought, oh, I know, for some reason, you're the, uh, the lightning bolt, you know, the lightning on the earring. The yeah, the yeah. <laughs> and, and that, uh, uh, through you, I recognised in you um, a, a quiet confidence. And I mean, uh, again, I mean, I'm not meaning it in a, a weird way. Like, um, you know, the um, Clint Eastwood had a, a stillness, but a power. Didn't have to yeah. speak. And 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 I and I saw that in you as a human being, you know, and but also through your character. So I thought, what way is this lightning bolt where you could, you know, as you say, I think that determination, you would have gone to the ends of the earth, you know, that that uh, never given up. But that power, that, uh, so it was like a man uh, of few words, you know, a man yeah. with uh, no name. He was such a mysterious character. We found out the bounty hunter had a lot more emotions. Uh, so that's interesting. That Yeah, and, and Ray, I mean, I think, you know to to play to play a bounty hunter as well i mean it's yeah what what kid doesn't want to play a bounty hunter i mean you know growing up from you know watching boba fett to, i mean han solo to and, and absolutely just this this idea of you know someone that could ha have a stillness and, and it was a really nice I think challenge for, for, for me as an actor as well to just be able to, to, to try and, you know, convey that by, you know, especially initially where, you know, we Slade's story isn't avert. No one, re, you know, he's not explaining his motives. It's just, you know, there's a steeliness there. And I do think things like, yeah, the, 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 the earring that I loved. And I remember going to get that done, um, uh, in Wellington at, um, you know, went to the, te to, to the place and got my ear done and it just felt, yeah, absolutely. Now we're going, now we're cooking uh, and then getting the tattoo put on my arm, that beautiful, um, wonderful tattoo that, 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 that the art department put on that. Then obviously I, I kept on during the whole shoot, um, because it would, you know, we touched it up every now and then. And, and at the end of filming, I remember when we finally removed it, it was like I had this incredible uh, sleeve, up, upper sleeve branding, because obviously I'd got a suntan, but that part of the tattoo was all white and it looked incredible. And since then, I think, you know, I've, I've you know, I, you know, got a, f a fair few tattoos now that are all kind of from that time and in homage to Slade almost. And uh and the beauty was it was Kaylin that did my tattoos. So um, there's a lovely uh, synchronicity to that, <laughs> you know. So it's, it's, again, that's a special interconnection. And, and, um, and uh, yeah, Kaylin was a tremendous actor and a lovely young oh. man. I've oh, got one for Jess. Cheers. Good morning, Jess. Um, Good morning. What, what was your favourite thing about the tribe? Uh, P.S. Slade was one of my favourite characters. So did you, what was your favourite thing about the tribe? Matt, anything in particular? Oh, yeah. I mean, great question, great. Jess. Thank yes, you. Thanks. I mean, uh, 
uh, you know, so much. I mean, the, the character, um, obviously, you know, to to be playing Slade, uh, the you know the the, the quality of uh, of his narrative and his storyline, um, to have that opportunity to be filming. I mean, you know, I, I loved Liberty. Um, it was such a cool set. Um, you know, I remember every morning when we drive up in, in you know, in, in, into the hills and the valleys to, to, to go and shoot at Liberty. You just got this sense you were really in this town. Um, and, you know, you'd spend a lot of time with the cast. And oh, I just couldn't have wished for a better bunch of people to be acting with both you know behind behind the camera you know from the directors I worked with to the crew who just were just absolutely top of their game and and I was learning so much absolutely every second of the day and I think to be able to share screen time with you know people like Kaylin um you know lots of scenes with Tom obviously and Fleur and and then to have friendships as well with these with these you know guys and girls off off screen as well um just felt an incredible um an incredible blessing really oh, that's lovely that i've got one from um our tribe tv series on youtube this is from camilla so good morning camilla so sorry if i'm mispronouncing your name but so Slade, in my opinion, was the most badass guy on this show. Yeah. How, how did it feel to play a character with so much charm and swagger? That's an interesting. <laughs> that's a, that's a great. Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. That's such a cool thing to say about Slade. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I I, I it definitely felt very very cool to play him. You know, when I'd get the the script through in advance of shooting, and I just the way that the script was written with that kind of <clears throat> that that eastward quality that that bounty hunter quality i just you know it was a real pleasure to a be able to 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 say those words and those lines um and, but what was lovely was that at at times because slade did have the swagger but because he was keeping his cards really close to his chest he was perhaps you know uh, you know he, behaving in a way that actually really upset quite a few people obviously how he treats ruby initially um you know uh, towards the end of the season especially where ruby calls him a liar a coward and a cheat um you know the the friction and that energy he has with ebony um you know slade has a lot of friction with the characters that he comes into in in his orbit so i love that side of it as well where you actually for all the swagger you could start to see some of the cracks there some of the vulnerabilities um and the fact that he just had to keep on with this mission um even if it meant along the way there was going to be um some bust ups and arguments and and that felt great you know to play a character who didn't need approval or didn't need to be liked um you know there's a certain freedom with that i think that's an interesting uh an interesting insight there, Matt. And that's, do you, do you know, it's very weird that, and this might be me, because uh, I'm on the autistic spectrum myself, uh, um, uh, fortunately not uh, to the, 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 the degree of Zach, but on the uh, yeah. Asperger's side. And, and I didn't know until I was 50 years old, mind you, I always thought I was eccentric. But I always, I love movement, and I love movement in nature, watching the trees or birds, yeah. fly, whatever. But I've always observed people, Matt, and, and actors and actresses, and, and this is quite a unique, I've never discussed this before, but you're a character, and you, I used to watch you in The Rushes every day, and for the listeners, The Rushes are, the previous day's filming will come in, and I'd look at The Rushes every day. And I used to watch your rhythms, how you walked. And so I think that, that our previous questioner picked up a swagger, which is, not a it's a confidence as opposed to a swagger a confidence and like walking in four four time and then sometimes in a lightning way that you'd walk in three four time now you you uh, it's I very love it. good. and I, I i promise you i mean everybody that i meet i watch how they walk and i yeah. them and their intonations and your voice is very rhythmic and very melodic and very um it's very very interesting and Watching you walk, you used to bring my pulse rate down. It's weird. 
And um, oh it's, right, that's that. yeah. <laughs> so it's that, um that's it, so that is so cool and and, and and it's such a cool observation because i do i think you know finding the physicality of of the character is is a real key way in you know i mean there's various ways isn't it you can find that character from the inside out sometimes and then other times from, from the exterior to the interior and i think yeah the physicality the walk the stillness the moments of movement um all absolutely inform that often it's once once I got the sense of this is how Slade moves, the, this is how he, the force with which he moves through the world. Okay. Once I kind of unlocked that, it then felt like, you know, um, I could fully, fully inhabit him. Um, so, yeah, that that's just so cool to know that translated um, and w- w- with you. And so, maybe some of the listeners, if you're ever watching uh, the tribe or indeed any other show, but particularly the tribe, if you're, Rewatching some of the episodes, check out because each each member of cast walks in a different way. Uh, yeah, um, maybe it's a subconscious thing. I mean, uh, but but uh, you know, and, and it's interesting if you look if you're a music fan, which we'll talk about music in a minute. But Oasis and uh, now the the two boys, the um, oh, the, 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 oh the, um, the Gallagher, the Gallagher brothers, not Noel, the other one, um, uh, Liam, Liam. Liam has a very interesting walk. Oh, and, yeah, uh, absolutely. And even the the way that he sings, you know, he kind of with with the microphone at the angle and his and his hands behind his back and his feet splayed out. It, there's the swagger, isn't it? And it is a and it is a confidence. It's a, like an fu world, you know. I mean, it's yeah, fascinating. Uh, Absolutely, and, uh, Ray. I think you're spot on because it is like that, that, you know, that body language, which, you know, I do a lot of work with, you know, kind of people helping their, them present or their, their their confidence when they stand up and have to maybe deliver a speech or a presentation. And, you know, over 55 percent of our impact comes from our body language, um, you know. And, and you, so you know, it's you know, interesting, Matt, that, 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 that 95 percent of language is nonverbal. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. It's the tone, isn't it? And 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 the words play a small part, but the words land if the rest is all in sync. And I love that idea, Ray, that if you turned the sound down and watched, say, Slade move, or the way Lex moves, or you know, or um, Ruby, or Ebony. That th- yeah, I love that idea that it would all be telling the story through the physicality. Uh, I think it's a great, great point. And again, not 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 to not don't mention it to Caleb. I've already had a chat with Caleb. He's up in uh, up in the uh, church hall with his polar bears and with his uh, yeah. But but Matt, you know, um, like his his animal is a panther, and um, yeah. and and, and uh, again, at some point we'll have to have another uh, chat about this because I'm fascinated with uh, uh, again in Native American uh, 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 kind of culture uh, in the indigenous where. Uh, they'd they'd pick an animal, and yeah. uh, they'd get in tune with that animal and learn from that animal, and and uh, so yeah. I mean, um, I was uh, I used to watch uh, Caleb and some of the scenes. I thought Caleb is being a panther right now. Yeah, and, I, I can see that. So that's so true. Yeah, how he'd be stalking. It is like he'd uh, well, more he'd move around the set like a uh, and 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 when he was uh, interacting with Slade, it was like a. Uh, you were almost prey to him and until he come. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It was very, very interesting. That So I've got one now from Zachary Church. Good morning, Zachary. Um, hey, Zachary, good name. Yeah, just a lovely name. That's a good name. That, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, who was Zachary? Who was Zach named after then, uh, Mad? I think we always, we just always knew. We we just loved that name. Um, it was, it was our, it was our, one that we straight away you know often you you have a list of names <clears throat> and i know we did for the girls but when it came to when we knew we were having a boy it was just sack straight off um there's something just really cool about it quite punchy quite punky um so yeah it was always sack yeah ringo star's son is zach as well you that's know, right a... yeah yeah great well, drummer himself great drummer. And, he, and he and he drums for um liam gallagher to bring oh. it full circle so yeah <laughs> And, you know, again, going for us, one, one time, I mean, the Beatles were always my inspiration and my hero. And we flew from Cannes. Uh, we were at one of these festivals and rushed to get on the plane. And 
sat next to who there was there, uh, Ringo Starr and his wife. And I was there with my grandsons. And I thought, oh, my God, it's my hero. I dare speak. Wow. <laughs> yeah. my, my grandsons were saying, hey, Grandpa, look who's there. So this man <laughs> We were talking. And, you know, they said, I can't believe I'm sitting next to the guy uh, who is Thomas a Tank. You know, so there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when we got to the airport, they wanted the autograph. They wanted Thomas the Tank's autograph. And I thought, <laughs> like, what are these kids like? What's the world coming to? I mean. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I guess you went back and played the Beatles on uh, on heavy rotation then to, to show. You know, what... it, it was the weirdest thing because in collecting the luggage, um, um, and I, I just couldn't speak with him. I mean, I didn't want to speak with him, but yeah, yeah. And he almost recognised me. It was the weirdest thing because um, he had been uh, at some of our stands, and you know, because we were working, which is another story with um, oh, the, with um, Britt Allcroft, who did Thomas the Tank, and right, okay. something with Britt. So, so um, I mean, I was all like. Uh, you know, swaggering myself and saying, hey, Ringo knows who I am. <laughs> that is a... Worth. And they said, what? what the, the Beatles? You know, that's Thomas the Tank, Grandpa, you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, um, say don't meet, they say don't meet your heroes, don't they? But um... I'm sure that it's... Uh... So, Zachary, your question, what was your process for assuming Slade's character... Were there secrets you knew the whole season long, or were you surprised when the script revealed Slade and Mega were brothers? Oh, yeah. Well, great, great question. Um, so, again, I mean, I think getting, you know, uh, getting into the character of Slade was, again, the physicality, uh, as we've spoken about, getting the right movement, the walks, um, and, and then finding the stillness as well in delivering the dialogue, you know, because especially in those first few episodes, Slade's a man, a few words, and every word has to count. So finding a, a vocal rhythm for that was really key for me. Um and, you know, kind of things like how much eye contact is he going to give? So once I locked into that and some of that then started to flex and adapt, depending on who I was working with. Um, but so that was my way into to, to, to the process of playing Slade and, and then just obviously feeding off the energy of whichever character I was opposite and what they were giving me and, um, within the storyline and as a, the actor as well. But, yeah, what a twist. I mean, you know, it was amazing because I... Again, I, I knew that Slade was on a quest, but f for what and to what extent, to what end goal, I, I, I didn't know until, you know, kind of halfway through the, the, the season when, you know, obviously the, we, we got the scripts a couple of weeks before, you know, we shot. And, um, yeah, it was an incredible moment where the reveal of, uh, of Mega and, 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 and Slade and it all just kind of clicked then. I was like, of course, yeah, that's why. And retracing the steps, it was almost like, um, say, Chris Nolan film like Memento, where you go backwards in time and everything slotted into place. Uh, but it was an incredible moment. I think we were all <clears throat> quite excited. I think I was with Merrill at the time uh, when we were looking through uh, and that storyline got revealed and there was just such palpable excitement. And then... Yeah, next time I saw Kalen, I was like, hey, bro. <laughs> like, all right, bro. And we just knew that we were going to have loads of scenes together, which was, you know, something we were really looking forward to. And and just, you know, wow, from that moment, it was just the emotional heat just got turned up. And that's where Slade, you start to see the vulnerability. And, and that was really exciting. I've got another question here, Matt. So yep. this is from Linion. Linion, that's an interesting name. Shabernak, Linion Shabernak. Good morning, Linion. If you could play another role in the tribe, who would it be and why? <laughs> great question. Um, great question. Um, oh, I mean, there's a lot to choose from um, because there were so many cool characters. Um, I, I mean, so many, you know... <laughs> Yeah, it might sound strange, but if we're not, you know, if we can go cross gender, I mean, you know, a character like Ebony, um, I mean, you know, Meryl just played her so well. I mean, it's untouchable, but, you know, she was her and Slade were almost like <clears throat> mirror images of each other with their energy and 
you know, they were like these magnets that just attracted and repelled as well. And this mix of oil and water. So, I mean, her character was just astonishing. Um, and and from, you know, the other guy's point of view, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, who wouldn't want to play Lex? I mean, again, there was some lovely similarities, I think, <clears throat> between Lex and Slade in the sense of, you know, people questioning their motives, you know, who are they out for? Are they just out for themselves? What's the bravado? What's the act, you know, and, and what's actually the vulnerability that peeks through every now and then, like, you know, the sun kind of coming out from behind the clouds. And it's interesting, like, yeah, Kay very much, it was like playing Lex like a panther. And I think for me, it was Slade was almost like the shark, you know, you have to keep on moving. Uh, if the minute he stopped, you know, he'd be in trouble. Um, so I think, yeah, those, those, you know, those would be the ones I'd, I'd, I'd probably want to play first off. But I mean, you know, you could never replicate, I mean, what, 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 what they did and the way everybody inhabited their, their roles, they just defined them so clearly. That's, that's very well done, uh, Matt. So I've got one now from Emily Acton. What was it like working with the Cassie sisters? <laughs> uh, hi Emily uh, yeah oh it was a joy um, an absolute joy I mean they what a family <laughs> I mean you know was so privileged to to, to really get to know them <clears throat> offset as well and just hang out and, and that was just just awesome um, I guess the majority of, of of my scenes were were really kind of with with Meryl and we just had so much fun. Um, I mean, there's a real twinkle with Meryl and um, we would make each other giggle, make each other laugh quite a bit. And <laughs> so we had to make sure we were really, really focused when the camera was rolling. Um, but just uh, what was what was lovely is this sense of you didn't quite know where the scenes were going to go. And I mean that in a really good way in that, like, you know, we, we both had obviously the 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 essentials like you you had all your lines down you knew your blocking you knew where you were going but with Meryl just feeding off each other um this sense of you know it was almost like chess moves you know with Ebony and Slade <laughs> you know and Meryl would move uh you know one piece one way Slade would move the other and there was a lovely energy there in those scenes so yeah it was a it was a joy absolute yeah, joy great chemistry there between you the yeah three. Went very well that I've got this is I love this name glittery cucumber that's it that's a great <laughs> very very glittery cool cucumber. as that's a cool name that uh, cool I'd as. like to know if he watched any of the show before he was cast and if so who his favorite character was did you watch the show before you cast Matt or not uh, so no, it's really interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't before I was cast. Um, and once, well, not be, you know, let me take it back before I auditioned. So obviously once, you know, kind of, I, I knew there was an audition coming up, <clears throat> you know, went and, and did my homework cause I wanted to, to know about the show and my housemate, uh, John, um, who's also my, my bandmate, um, in last picture show, one of his great friends, um, uh, it was an, absolute and he's a huge huge tribe fan and i remember just mentioning it in conversation to 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 patsy i said oh i've got this audition coming up this sounds like a really cool show called the tribe <laughs> and her jaw literally hit the floor and she dropped well, you know her, her fork and her knife she's like oh my god right <laughs> and that was it it was just you know um she was this as as the tribe family and fans are just this absolutely encyclopedic knowledge on the show and and that was it we just we dive straight in and you know just managed to you know kind of really get up to speed with with w what was happening and uh, and the world and the characters within it um and again i think there's always some that you know grab you think oh i wonder if i'll get to work with you know kind of with lex or you know kind of oh kind of amber looks really cool or you know so <clears throat> yeah it was um yeah it was like a, a dream come true i think she wanted to come on the plane with me when i came out to <laughs> new zealand and in, and in fact her and John did come over um, and join me for the last uh, week or so in New Zealand. And uh, they were there at the rap party, uh, which we had in Wellington, that beautiful sunny day, massive barbecue, everyone there with their families and friends and such a joyous occasion. And yeah, remember, and they were there. So it felt again, a nice full circle synchronicity. 
Isn't that lovely, though, that I've got one here from Isabella Milne. Good morning, Isabella. Good morning, Isabella. And there's quite a few questions here, uh, uh, Matt. So, um, yeah. and you've answered some of them, but it's interesting because, uh, and, and again, we've gone into it, but Isabella will find your uh, talk about Zach very interesting because she said, what is it like to live with a person who is on the spectrum that has profound autism? What I mean by that is that I understand as I yeah, also yeah. have Asperger's as well. So um, Isabella can uh, connect with us. And, and indeed, there's many, many within our tribal yeah. family. And it's the same matter. It's like a family. It's like a, I often say it's a tribe within a tribe. But yeah. So, so good, good on you, Isabella. And both Matt and I, I'm sure, hope you're understanding the world you inhabit. And it's not easy, but you keep going. And, and, um, and uh, so Absolutely. I'm just... Uh, Isabel, an interesting question from Isabel. Do you see yourself in your character Slade at all? And if so, what would you take away from it? Do you see anything in Slade, Matt, that you uh, uh, similarities or? Um, yeah, I mean, so, so yeah, I mean, two brilliant, brilliant questions there. I mean, I, I, I think um, the for Slade, it was definitely. I'll answer that one first. To take away would be that his kind of determination. You know, Slade was absolutely on, on this quest and he knew where he was heading and what his objective was. And he was not going to be dissuaded by anything to, to, to get there. Um, and I really relate to that. I think, um, you know, my one of my strengths is um, determination, you know, and I know that's come through. And I think as an actor, you need that, you know, to fight for the roles that you want to, 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 to you know, fight for the right decisions and choices that you make. Um, and I think that determination has really come into play, you know, outside of my profession, you know, um, again, fighting for to make sure Zach's had the care that he needs. So I think that is something I really share with Slade. Um, and, 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 you know, there are times I do, if I'm floundering, I think, what would Slade do? Come on, tap <laughs> into that. Yeah. Tap into that, that grit. I think that grit that the character had. Um, and I think grit's a good word because life, life isn't it's smooth. You know, life is, you know, it, 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 it's messy and, and, and gritty and, and I think there's a, you know, there's something really powerful about having that um, that grit. Um, so, I, so that's something I go to. And as far as yeah, great question about living with you know um, with someone like Zach who who is so profoundly uh, um, impacted uh, as we all are by by his um, form of autism. As as you you know, Isabella, it's unique to every individual. Um, and I can only speak for Zach. But what I've learned to do, probably you know you know later rather than earlier is to just start to really really tap into Zach's rhythms you know and stop trying to get Zach to fit into a neurotypical world and go well this is what you're meant to do this is what neurotypical people do and this is what you have to do in a queue and you know just realizing that's just that's not how Zach is wired and trying to just strip that away and see the world from Zach's eyes and you know what his rhythms are what his triggers are what matters to him and stop trying to just control it so much and actually I think in the process of starting to let go of that over the last few years we've always had a really tight bond me and Zach but that's you know made it even stronger and i think you know my bond with zach is the thing probably that i'm the proudest of in in my whole life you know lovely well done matt no i think that's uh, again very moving and thematically it's interesting i've been developing a screenplay which um is is kind of about this but and it is the theme is you know if you live your life trying to be what i expect you to be you'll never be free and yeah. you Matt, have unlocked through your therapy, I think, uh, a lot of guilt and a lot of pent up yeah. within. But you've also, I think, Zach is now free. Okay. And uh, yeah. And, uh, yep. and you've accepted him. And yep. by that, you've, and that's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful, it's okay to be. The world needs everybody, you know? Yeah. Ab abs every, abs every color, 
you know, yeah. black, white, yellow, whatever it is, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. The talented, not talented, you know, everybody has a right to be here, uh, whether or not it's uh, clear to us why. And, yeah. and Zach, has a, Zach has a right. And, and you, in accepting that you've done, which is the greatest love, and that's to, it's like Jonathan Livingston Siegel, it's acceptance and to let go. And, oh, uh, yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful. But that, and yeah, absolutely. And just to get rid of the noise, Ray, as well, I think, you know, I think, you know, if, if, if I spend my if I if I spend my time trying to make people live the way that I live it or the way I see it, then that's not going to work for, for for him. So it's like that's that phrase, isn't it? You know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Well, I I, I don't agree with that. I think it's like, well, because the way I want to be treated might be totally different from everybody else. It's like finding a way to treat people the way they want to be treated, which I guess is, it's, it's empathy, isn't it? And it's kind yeah. of rawest sense. It's interesting. I think that, um, I think it's natural as a parent to, you know, you, you're doing it out of care and, and, and responsibility and to, uh, you want them to be secure and happy. And, but, but ultimately there's some things you, you can't change, you know, and, uh, yeah. and, and, and I, I've got that with my own, my own children, my grandsons where, and I think that's a, a nice place to be and you'll be comfortable in your skin because you, you'll flourish because you'll see Zach flourishing and he'll be happy. Yeah, exactly, Ray. And I think it's really you, – you're so right about looking at those things that you can't change. You're going, well, look, actually, Zach is Zach. Zach is who he is. But what I can change are things around him that might not be helping him. So – the environment yeah. I can change, the situation I can change, the way people respond to certain things, that can be changed. But, you know, us as people, you know, in that core, it's just, yeah, complete um, acceptance and, and, and love, you know. Um, so well, I, I have to say that, that you know, that, that I think it's heroic. I mean, you know, for you to, and you're right, I mean, you can change as you've done, you know, you've fought for your son and, and, yeah, and, yeah. Lovely and, and in that, and if this discussion today, I mean, it gives, you know, patience and persistence and that grit to, yeah. to never, you know, never say, die, say damned, you know, and to. Uh, yeah, yeah, exa exactly, exactly, Ray. Not where you start, it's where you finish, you know, I mean, things aren't easy. Patience and persistence and, and that determination, I mean, and it's good, never, I never, ever give up on anything. I'm like you or Slade, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll never give up that um now i've got one from matthew jones good morning matthew oh again, hi matthew he's, he's um, a Matt, wonderful guy yeah matthew is a big uh, tribal fan within our community oh, and he's uh, awesome and and, and, and uh, matthew forgive me if i he's asking about who did you want to see slayed with permanently ebony or ruby we won't, oh, get, into, great. <laughs> won't get into that because of the the books and that but um, Matthew is asking, any new last picture show music? Ah, oh, yeah. Well, Matthew, I mean, he's yeah. hi, Matthew. You're such a massive supporter of, of 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 my music and the band, and you know, it means so much to us. So, thank you to you and and to all the, you know, the tribe family that have really <clears throat> supported and followed the the music side of things as well. It's so deeply appreciated. Um, so yeah, we um. You know, between uh, the band members, we've got about five kids. So time is always seems to be against us <laughs> to, to be able to do as much music as we like. If we could, in an ideal world, we would just do release music the whole time. But we have got a song that we wrote um uh many years ago actually that we then kind of revamped redusted off and in the light of uh once the brexit decision came out over here that was something that obviously stirred up a lot within this country and w the song took on a new life with new lyrics um uh, the lyrics of which focused on um don't let the division pull us under don't lose sight of the joy and wonder there's more that unites us than divides us and it became like a rallying cry so the song became called joy and wonder and we recorded it last year uh, in a beautiful studio gave it a full-on big sound big treatment um and um then john the guitarist in the band uh, uh, and the co-founder of the band uh, is a 
absolute genius when it comes to um, directing and filming cinematography and, uh, and artistry. I think a lot of the tribe family know of John's work. Um, and he filmed uh, a short film to go with the uh, song. Um, and we're planning to release that uh, later on in the year um, or at a time when it feels appropriate, actually, given the, the climate, there might come a time when actually, you know, it feels right and euphoric to release that. But it's all in the can. It's just having its final edit. So, Matthew, there will be a big big single um coming uh coming out uh imminently uh it, we're just waiting for the right moment to get it out there you should uh <clears throat> excuse me let us know matt when that's released and we'll uh, advise the fans will through the, our social media through the facebook and twitter and that and and matt oh, some... that'd be awesome that'd be awesome ray thank you and with um John Williams, who's a tremendous talent and a lovely oh, man. Wow. wow. <laughs> the maestro, absolute legend, he legend. Is, he's a terrific, uh, terrific producer. And, and, uh, and John's always been a big fan of the tribe. And, and we were speaking just the other day, actually. And, uh, and he's actually had a number one album, I think, the last couple of weeks. I, can't, I think it was the, uh, was it the house, whoever did, whatever it is. I mean, he, I can't remember the name of the band, but, but, he, you know, he's keen to do more tribe music and, and we must get, you know, do some tribe music. And get oh. you so that's something we need to. Yeah, Ray, we would, would, would um, love to, would absolutely love to do that. Because, you know, along, I mean, music's just always been such an outlet for me alongside my acting. And, um, you know, it's um, especially over the last 10 years, you know, releasing music with, with Last Picture Show. And also I, I've got a side project called Dissembler and I did an album a couple of years ago and, they tend to be my piano based songs that I write and then just release and get out there. And, um, but writing, you know, for a show, you know, kind of more soundtrack style is absolutely something I, you know, we'd be absolutely dead keen to do more of, um, for sure. Let's, let's, yeah, let's do that. Ray. Do you do music every day, Matt? Do you, uh, um, yeah, I, I, when I can at the moment I am very much and also because um Georgia is so into her music and um uh, and Zach really loves music Rosie as well so there's always music going on in the house be it you know uh Pearl Jam playing on the record player um or we've got a piano upstairs you know and it's hard to walk past there without playing and at the moment I'm feeling a lot of stuff I'm I, I'm writing at the moment and is coming out through songs so um you know I wrote a song called under the blue last week which was all about you know um well the state the planet's in at the moment from a you know planet point of view the blue skies the lack of vapor trails and you know the earth itself how it's doing at the moment and just recorded that and the beauty of you know social media now is you you know can record it and upload it as so many people are and it's just you know through facebook or um, i'm going to get a youtube channel going with that and then you can just share it with the world. And, you know, if it brings a comfort or, 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 you know, enjoyment to one person, you know, then job done. <laughs> you know? I think that's wonderful. And no, and I, I love it. I, I, I um, applaud anybody creative and anybody that can give birth to music or songs or fill blank pages for books or scripts or stories or wear their heart on the sleeve and acting, whatever it is. Uh, the arts, I think, is lovely, and and I respect and admire it so very much. I think it's uh, it's terrific, all ages, and as you say, Matt, it doesn't matter if you're selling a million copies or one copy or no copies or, you know, I I, I do music every day, and sometimes I'm the only one that hears it. <laughs> well, <day>. yeah, <laughs> well, it's its own reward, isn't it, Ray? What, what what are you doing at the moment? What kind of stuff are you you doing? Do you know, I mean, it sounds very grandiose. I mean, I'm I'm doing a symphony for the vines, you know. And uh, wow, yeah, awesome. so I, I was very thrilled to do the Spirit Symphony that was uh, performed by. And that's kind of mind blowing, you know, when you hear a hundred and thirty piece orchestra. And I I'm a terrible procrastinator. I I've been writing this damn thing for a long time, and <laughs> yeah, and, and and always I don't know if it's a fear of success or a fear of failure or, you know, I'm often saying to to my family, they're all very creative as well, and yeah, I don't know what it is, but yeah, I, I, I sometimes I, I, yeah, and other other music. I mean, I just you know hear it in my head, and sometimes I think, well, I must get that down, and 
and the years pass and I never do it. But but I need, yeah, you know, I need a reason, a reason to do it, you know. And and so um, you know, John is uh, John Williams. I think that's a reason to do it because I like working with uh, lovely people. And John is not only talented, but he's a, a tremendous human being, a very special man. And so maybe you know, maybe we can get get some tribal music to our tribal fandom there. I think oh, they'd enjoy it. And that would be, I, that would be absolutely awesome. Ray I'd, in a heartbeat would love to love to yeah. be involved. So look at maybe I'm, I'm going to be checking out some of these audio books and, and um, I know Caleb and Merrill and uh, some of the other cats would like to, to do some readings, but um, so we'll see what's possible. You never yeah, know. Fabulous. Oh, that sounds great. Ray. It sounds like no, just... time has just flown by and, and I, I, um, I really appreciate you uh, today taking this time on behalf of your tribal fans around the world. And, and in closing, is there any any message you'd like to give to them at this particular time? Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, Ray, just first of all, thank you for this. It's been such an honor and just so great to reconnect with you, you know, and, and just with the, the tribe family. I just want to thank everyone out there for, for their loyalty and, you know, for... Yeah, it was life changing for me being involved on such a cool show and, and, and the fans throughout all the years from, you know, being at Dragon Con to just through social media through have just really helped you know, enrich and change my life for the better. And I'm, I'm incredibly humbled and grateful and thankful to you all. And I would just go back to what I said at the beginning, which is just two things. It's OK right now to not be OK and just to. Be kind to yourself and, and just to keep breathing. I know it sounds so simple, but, you know, sometimes when we're under stress and in the world at the moment, we realize we've held our breath and actually just to breathe really deeply, um, you know, kind of, a, there's a, you know, breathe in, breathe out. I know it sounds so simple, but it's it's the key to it all. And we're all in this together, you know, so we're all not, in this together. Yeah, probably advice, Matt and I. Uh, agree and endorse that and and i'd uh, as well just like to send my love as well as matt's to all of you out there in the tribal uh, fandom and and uh, and i i really uh, know you'd like to join me in thanking matt for taking the time it's a two-way thing matt i mean support is a two-way thing and and that's lovely it's very special and a testament to you as a, a human being and all our cast that you take the time to to give something back and that's really because it mirrors the the tribal fans are so loyal and supportive and yeah, and uh, yeah. and I I wouldn't feel right not doing this so it's a great joy for me to to chat with all the I love it that's why I I could then I could speak with you for the next five hours you know but, yeah I know <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's like a family I mean we you don't need to see each other daily but when we connect it is like a family you just pick up from I'm yesterday happy. so Matt you take care and and lots of love to Suzanne and to your lovely family to Zach and, and the two girls there and uh, and you stay safe and look after yourself and and we'll be in touch and we'll catch up very very soon it's uh, lovely to speak with you my friend I really appreciate the time and uh, as we say keep the dream alive eh? Always Ray keep the dream alive bless you my friend thank you so much That's right Matt we'll be in touch take care lots of love Cheers Ray thanks 